I don't know how many times I've said like cute or so stinking cute or whatever, but if I ever say that to you about your pattern or you, it's the highest compliment <laughs> because I don't know, it's a good thing to be so stinking cute. Hey everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 62 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Tuesday, May 5th, 2020, and I am so excited that it's a new month. I have new things to show you, and this is going to be an awesome episode. I'm going to try not to kick my tripod as much as last week, but no promises. Um, so I'm not wearing any knitting today. It's it's just that time of the year, but I am wearing a knitting t-shirt for the Super Summer Knit Together, which is held in Nashville, Tennessee. And I went there, I guess this was in 2018, got a t-shirt and some yarn, um, but I don't think that I've been back since uh, because it's always the weekend of my anniversary, but oh well, there are other yarn festivals, right? Um, and it is nice and hot here in North Texas, just outside of Dallas, so whew, avoiding the outdoors during the day as of right now and starting to move my walks with toaster to like later in the evening. Um, around seven when the sun kind of starts to go down right now, it's getting a lot nicer, but I can't believe it's May. I have um, two finished objects today, some new cast-ons, several whips, a design to talk about. I have uh, Helical winners to announce and gosh, I don't know, questions to answer, all kinds of things. So let's just get started. So I do have a finished object that's not yet blocked, but the ends are woven in. Um, I'm going to definitely block it because this is a scarf and it's pretty much summer, so I'm going to be putting this away for a while. I want it to be washed so it's not put away with oils or anything, um, but it already looks pretty. Like if it was winter, I'd probably just start wearing it and not block it. Um, this is the Traveler's Loop by Don Barker. It was my Helical um, project. This is, I already knew how to do helical knitting, but when I signed up for knitting in the, Hill, the Knitting in the Hills retreat, which was in March, this it was way back in like, August or September and I hadn't learned how to do helical knitting yet. So I signed up for this class so I could learn helical knitting. And then of course in the months between then I did learn how to do it, but it was still great to go to the class. Um, and I learned some new things, so that was really cool. Um, but this is a super easy um, infinity scarf garter stitch. I did used two colors here. Um, I believe the blue was called water water screen, Malabrigo Machita water screen, and then the tan was um, Ching Fiber in Blue Finch. It looks really, really great on. I'm going to try to remember to record a video putting this on for you later because I can loop it um, twice or three times. Um, when I bound this off, I made sure, is that the bind off edge? Yes. I made sure to do a really loose bind off. I started binding off just with a regular bind off, you know, one stitch over the other, and that was not working out great. It was a little too tight, and I'm not really that loose. Um, so what I ended up doing is the knit two together through the back loop bind off. So you knit two together through the back loop and then slip your stitch back over to the left hand needle and repeat. It's a great stretchy bind off, still nice and sturdy, um, and looks, I mean, almost identical to uh, the typical traditional bind off. Um, I also, just today put on Instagram how I finish off something that I knit in the round. It's on my IGTV. Um, where am I? So when you knit something in the round and you bind off, you get a little stair step, kind of a gap, because knitting in the round is a spiral, not a circle. Um, but I can't seem to find it. Let me look for my end. I wanted to show you. Here we go. So right there, I mean, you can kind of see that knot right there, um, but that's where I finish, and I have a little technique that I learned from somebody, it's not my technique, um, for how to make this nice and smooth. So I'll be sure to link my IGTV video, but basically you just pick up a stitch, you pick up the first stitch you bound off, knit and pass one over, and then that's it. That's how you get a nice smooth edge there. 
So super pleased. I did finish at, by the end of April before the helical was over, even though that was not a requirement, um, but I was happy to have that done in April. Now, another project that I wanted to have done in April, but we all knew that that was not gonna happen. <laughs> it definitely, definitely didn't. Um, that is my blur shawl, throwing needles and things around here. So I don't even know how much I've done. I've done like five rows <laughs> since last week, so not very much progress. But here is my blur shawl by Deanne Ramsey, or I've been kind of thinking, I wonder if it's Diane Ramsey, and I'm just saying it wrong. If you know, let me know. But I've just done a few rows since last week, which is, it's fine. I've not been able to like sit down and knit or crochet at night or in the morning because I've been making so many videos. Um, last week, I think I, I put, um, I think I uploaded eight different videos between my two channels. So that was pretty crazy. Um, but not every week will be like that. It's just, that's how it is right now, trying to get a lot of content and then also just other things happen. I'll tell you more about that later on. Um, but that being said, I didn't really get to sit down and work on this. So it was just a row here and there during meetings during the day um, while I was watching my videos that I edited to make sure that they were all good. <laughs> So just a little bit here and there, but I still love this. Um, it's my only crochet project going right now. I just love having a crochet project. Um, I don't know. It's just nice to have that. Oh no, I just realized I haven't changed that from the helical. That's okay. We're announcing winners today, so I'll have another week to change it. Um, but I haven't talked about my yarns for this in a second, so let me just run through them here real fast. I even brought my labels. I cleaned my little basket out here nicely. Um, I'm using a G hook, my favorite Clover Amours, and the yarns that I am using currently, this one, is the Yarn at Home Mom, and I believe this one is called Pictures of You. I got this yarn when I was in Oregon, I think definitely in the Pacific Northwest, um, and then the color of the green that I just finished is also the Yarn at Home Mom, and that one's called like Kamiopsis, something like that. Used up almost all of that, which is great. And then I'm going to finish with Savvy Skeins, um, which is a Texas dyer. Uh, I can't remember what the yarn shop was that I got this from, but it's called Boots and Spurs. So that'll be fun to end with that one. So we'll see, I don't know if I'll get to that tonight, but hopefully I'll have more progress on it for you next week. Not even gonna promise to finish it because we all know how that goes. Okay, I have cast on some new projects. The first being socks. I actually have some socks going for the first time in a month and a half. I was knitting on my March socks and quit halfway through because I couldn't get the gauge. And oh my gosh, I feel like I just am like messy today. <laughs> um, and then I didn't even bother casting on April socks because I didn't want to and I was too busy making cozies. So finally going to knit some socks here. And the yarn that I picked for my May socks is nice and bright and summery and fun. It is mustache yarns in the color Jelly Belly. So this is a self-striping yarn and her yarn comes in 250 gram, or her sock yarn at least, comes in 250 gram skeins and they are a perfect match which means they are going to be identical so i have them wound into two little 50 gram cakes and then i chose something out of my scrap bucket i think this for the heel um, i did decide to start these toe up i just barely started i think i have one more round of de um, increasing excuse me to go i don't i didn't pay attention to what the striping was going to be like like I think it says, I thought it said on the label, but maybe online you can see like what the sequence is, how long the stripes are. Um, so it's interesting to me that it started out with like a little bit of light purple, a little bit of purple, and then a whole lot of blue. And I still have blue coming out. So I guess this is gonna be a whole lot of blue and then little stripes, we'll see. Um, but I did start at the toe and then the only thing, like I said, I'll do in solid is the heel. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to have socks going again. There was somebody, and I can't remember your name right this second because we like just started talking today, um, but 
there's somebody else on Instagram that said they have the same yarn and they've been needing to make socks. So I'm like, let's do it together because I need the encouragement <laughs> to actually knit these socks. I have just have not been knitting socks since I've been at home. I, socks are on the go knitting. I don't know what else to say. Like socks are not my evening knitting, but anyway, I need to get some on the needles because I don't know who I am without socks. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true anyway I have this in my one skein float tote with no bucket inside it's just the shell and I have my two little 50 gram guys going in there I think that'll be perfect to just have sat on my desk um, but that comes in the mini float tote pattern okay I also am going to make start a garment soon I haven't cast it on yet but I've got everything together and ready. Um, I am going to tell you more about this video a little later on, but I did make a video where I was planning my projects for this month. And so I talked a lot about um, what garment I'm going to make. So if you're watching this one first, it's going to fill out of order, but don't worry, you'll, you'll catch up. But I basically have my two skeins of yarn wound. Let me tell you about the yarn. This is from Gritty Knits. And I think the base is called Darlin, Darlin Wool Cotton. It's 50% superwash merino wool and 50% cotton. And this color is Josephine. It's super, super pretty and nice light pink. So the yarn definitely feels like cotton, but I guess the wool really just gives it that nicer drape um, where it doesn't feel rough like dishcloth cotton and it's not mercerized. So I think this is a cotton that I'll be happy wearing. So I have a nice little swatch that is blocked um, and I am getting gauge for that's I'm getting like six stitches per inch which which seems to be consistent with a lot of the patterns that I found so I know what size needle I need to get six stitches per inch now I just need to find the perfect pattern so I wanted to show you whoops as I throw things around and almost knock over my table there we go. I wanted to show you what I was leaning towards at, in the video that dropped on Tuesday and then what I might be leaning towards now. That's why I was saying it might be a little out of order, but let me show you what I found. Okay, so this is the pattern that I was leaning towards um, over the weekend when I recorded my video for Tuesday. It is called Cloudously. Um, I don't know if I'm saying that right, by Isabel Kramer. And it's a little t-shirt with nice texture running down the back. Ooh, it's hard to show you that. Um, but basically I'm looking for a summer top, either sleeveless or short sleeves, that is in fingering weight, that is simple but not boring. Like I wanna have a little something going on. And I love lace, but I need it to be practical. Like I wanna be able to not have to wear fussy undergarments in order to make the top work. So that one really hit the mark. Plus it has some interesting increases for the sleeves, um, something that I've never done. But then you guys started sending me messages about different patterns and designers that I should check out and they're all so good. So somebody told me I should check out um, Marie Green, who's Olive Knits, and her River Light Tea. So look at this, ah, sorry. It is so pretty, it's all double moss with that little texture at the bottom. I immediately saw it and was like, sold. I want to make this. But always make sure that you look at all the pictures and you go to the projects because while this is a gorgeous pattern, it is probably not gonna be for me because the neckline is too wide. And of course, maybe I could adjust it, um, but I'm just gonna show you some of these people on here. Beautiful top, but I don't want a neckline that's um, so wide that I have to wear another top underneath it. So I'm not, that's just the designer's picture again, but you can see it's, it's very wide. Um, so I was just like, I, I don't know. I'm still not so sure about that one, as beautiful as it is. And then somebody sent, uh, uh, sent me the designer named Megan Nodecker. I hadn't heard of her before, but she's got tons of patterns. Um, if you like garments, uh, actually she's got shawls and hats and all kinds of stuff, but garments as well. Um, you might wanna go check her out, Megan Nodecker. And I saw Lilium. 
And I think that this is actually the one that I'm going to make. It has lace on the top, short sleeves. It's, well, let me show you half the photo. It has, it's just so pretty. Now you can see how flowy that pattern is. And so I looked at the content of the yarn because I've been learning a lot lately that fingering weight, one fingering weight is not the same as another. You have to look at the fiber content and the makeup and even like, is it 80% wool or 75% wool? Makes a difference. Um, so this is the yarn that she used is um, a merino silk. So I know my yarn is not the same. Um, so I'm not gonna get exactly the same look as hers. However, I think it will still work and I'm willing to give it a try. So I think Lilium is what I have settled on. The other thing that really sold me is I've talked many times about my body shape is small on the top and gets wider on the hip. So just for example, like when I go to buy a two-piece bathing suit, I get two different sizes and they are like two to three sizes different from each other. That's how much of a difference I have. So any pattern that let's just say the bust measures great for me, it's gonna to be too tight when it gets down to my hips. So unless there's increasing in the pattern, like if there's not, I have to add it in or I am gonna be wearing like a crop top because my shirt's just gonna come right up. So the great thing about this is it already has A-line shaping in it. So I would not have to do anything. Whereas with Cladis Lee, um, I don't know for sure if there's any shaping in there, but I feel like I'm gonna have to add some in, which is not really a big deal. It's easy for a top-down pattern where there's all kinds of stockinette on the side, but it does sound pretty nice not to have to add it in. So I don't know, what do you guys think? I'm probably gonna have chosen. <laughs> I'm probably gonna have cast it on by Thursday, but still, I don't know. I just think that's so pretty. I feel like that's very me. And I think that even though the lace is on the top, I can still be okay. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'll start it and see what happens. Um, but anyway, I'm all, I'm swatched, I'm wound. I just need to buy a pattern and, or commit to a pattern and get started. So I cannot wait. I'm excited to do that. Okay, one more thing. I did say that I have another finished object, a design. So if you saw when I was showing you my socks earlier, I actually had a cozy on my 50 gram skein of yarn. So you guys and my testers, like several people said, wouldn't it be great if the Yarn Cozy Light was also made for 50 gram skeins? And I thought that that was a brilliant idea. And this weekend I sat down, played with the numbers and cast on and created a 50 gram Yarn Cozy. This is going to be the mini Yarn Cozy Light. It is so stinking adorable. Let me just show you it compared to a full size skein. So here's a 100 gram skein and here's a 50 gram skein and they're so cute. Oh my gosh, I can't even stand it. So I usually hand wind my socks. Um, even like the 100 grams, I'll hand wind it into 250 gram balls or these I would have normally hand wound. So I decided to cake them because I need to be able to test out my pattern. <laughs> um, so maybe this is going to convert me to caking 50 gram balls. I don't know, we'll see. Um, and then somebody else said, well, I guess this was in my testing group. They said that they would use it for um, 20 gram minis, like true mini skeins. And so I asked you guys on Instagram, do you cake your 20 gram minis? And lots of you said yes. Now I have, I don't think ever caked a 20 gram mini until this morning and it's so, cute oh my gosh it's so tiny so here we go here's a comparison 50 grams and 20 grams i think that this needs a cozy now i just started working on this today this is taking um well let's see i've got my i've got my yarn here um this is only 10 grams so i did wind it into a ball but i've just barely gotten it started because i've started this three or four times today just to try to get um the right starting stitch count and everything. Um, so that's probably what I'm gonna work on this evening. I cannot wait because this is gonna knit up so fast and it's gonna be so cute. And then I got an idea. 
one second. So what if I made a whole set of 20 gram mini yarn cozy lights in rainbow? Oh my gosh, how adorable would that be? I don't know how many times I've said like cute or so stinking cute or whatever, but if I ever say that to you about your pattern or you, it's the highest compliment <laughs> because I don't know, it's a good thing to be so stinking cute. But I have had this set of minis. These are all 10 grams. They're actually merino cashmere and silk. Um, so they're, you know, a nice fiber content. And originally I thought I would make them into one of those sweaters. I think it was called the Lifesaver sweater, where it was a gray background and then skinny, skinny stripes. It was a cardigan. And I just don't think that I'm probably going to ever make that. And if I do want to make it later on, I know that people have rainbow minis, so I could do it again. So I thought I want to use these right now to make um, little tiny 20 gram mini, mini cozies. Um, so here's the pink one. I feel like I'm missing a red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so never mind. I'm not missing a red. Um, but I don't know if I can manage it. We'll see. But I think I'm just having a vision in my head of rainbow cozies, little mini skeins all lined up. And I feel like that would be adorable. So I've got all those out. We'll see. Then maybe I'll see how long it takes to make one. I don't know, maybe like an hour or two shouldn't take too long. So that is in development. So real quickly, the Yarn Cozy Light, um, which is the full 100 gram um, skein size, came out last week. It has the plain ribbing, the uh, cables. I've got two of them here. I just don't have the self-striping with me, um, but plain cables and self-striping. That came out last week. Um, oh, and here I just have to say, um, thank you guys so much if um like whenever you buy a pattern from me whenever you watch a video of mine um whenever you support me by like reposting my stuff or talking to me in stories like every little thing that you do does not go unnoticed and this is helping me because my dream one day is to be able to work fully from home and support my family um, and grow my family and not have to um, not have to continue going to work outside of the house that's just my dream and you're ma helping make that come true every time you buy a pattern and every time you watch a video all of that is so so important to me it doesn't go unnoticed so thank you from the bottom of my heart um, yarn cozy light went live on Friday and it has sold um, it sold so well it's the best pattern uh, done the best i'm not saying this very well it has done the best for me out of all of my patterns ever by so many times like it just it it's done amazing and i know that that is due to my test knitters being so great and getting the pattern out there um, but also you guys being so great too so thank you so much but I wanted to say that and then I got sidetracked. The full size version of the pattern is already out. This version with the 50 gram and the 20 gram is going to be a separate pattern. So um, the way that that will work is I'm going to get that one tested like it's going to go through the full process. So it's going to be a few weeks before that one is ready. Um, but when it is, it's going to be its own pattern, the mini yarn cozy light with those two sizes and several different stitch patterns. Um, and then I don't want the people that already have the regular yarn or the original yarn cozy light to be left out because I'm going to combine the two patterns into a bundle, but also have them as separate PDF. So maybe you just want the original 100 gram size, or maybe you just want the 50 and 20 gram size, or maybe you want both. And so you can get them for a discounted bundle. But if you already have the original, you don't want to have to buy a full priced, um, you know, mini version of the pattern. So if you already have the original, you will get a coupon code so that you can get the um, mini version of the pattern um, so that it's the same price as the bundle. I feel like that was a jumble of words, but just know that I, I want you guys to get, um, if you want the pattern, I want you to get it for the best price. So those are things that I'm going to have for you, but it will be a separate pattern. Anyway, 
cannot wait to start working on my cute little 20 grams so cute um and i don't know adorable like so adorable it's like a whole little family I just love it. And I still want to do more versions of the cozies with worsted weight and of course crochet. So not leaving you guys out. I just, you know, one thing at a time. Okay, let's get into some questions. I am going on Ravelry to answer your questions from the Ask Me thread. And I think I have three questions tonight. I don't know if you can hear the dog barking. That's not toaster, but Ah, oh, those dogs are crazy. Okay, here is the first question. This is from White Coffee 88 who is Sherry. She says, hey Natalie, I've knit a sweater for my niece out of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Superwash. This is the first time I've knit with this yarn. How do I go about blocking it? Use wool wash and a blocking, blocking mat as I would other garments, or since it's superwash and the intent is for my sister to be able to throw it in the washer, is that what I should do? Then laying, lay it out on a blocking mat, throw it in the dryer. <sighs> Thanks, Sherry. Okay, I understand your conundrum here. And also since this was seven days ago, I'm so sorry if you have already washed it, but I would still love to tell you what I would do. And if you guys have advice, please go on to the thread and let Sherry know what you would do or in the comments, um, that would help a lot. So what I would personally do for a super wash yarn is when I block it, I would still hand wash it. So I have had experiences in the past with super wash yarn where it did not wash and dry well. Um, I hope that that doesn't happen in the case of this yarn. I've never worked with it before, um, but, but for the first time, just hand wash it and lay it out flat to block like you would normally. It's still a wool yarn, so it should block beautifully. Now, if you have a swatch, um, it would be a great time to test the yarn in the washer and dryer. The swatch, honestly, maybe wash it to see if any dye comes out, but if dye doesn't come out of it, throw it in with your clothes, dark clothes just in case, and let it rough and tumble in the washer and the dryer and see what happens. Um, see if it, measure it before, see if it shrinks, um, see if it looks like beat up, and then you'll be able to tell your sister what exactly she should do with it. Um, maybe it's just that she needs to wash it in the machine but on its own. Um, and then lay it flat to dry, or maybe it does great in the washer and dryer and you can tell her, you know, don't worry about it. It can just wash. Um, also just thinking when you do hand wash your, the sweater, um, you'll be able to see if the dye runs, which is really important because you don't wanna throw it in with clothes and, and ruin those clothes. Um, so that's what I would do is still hand wash the sweater, but if you have a swatch, that's where you can test things out. Um, hopefully, Hopefully it goes well and you can let your sister know that she can just wash it with ease. But I hope, let us know, let us know. Maybe somebody has worked with that Knit Picks Wool of the Andes before and can answer that question better than I can. Okay, the next question is from Southpaw Knits, who is Shannon. Um, she says, hi Natalie, I'm working on a crochet, or I'm working on crocheting a standard chain around the edges of a knitted blanket. I'm trying to figure out if I will have enough yarn to finish the edging. Is there a way to figure out how much yarn I will need? Does knitting take up more yarn or does crochet? Hashtag crochet challenged. Okay, Sharon, I, or Shannon, I'm sorry. I combined Sherry's name and Shannon's name. Um, Shannon, I totally understand because sometimes I feel a little confused with crochet as well because I'm like I understand this in knitting but crochet confuses me um, but typically knitting is going to take up less yarn than crochet um, but if you're doing a chain and not like a single crochet stitch that really doesn't take up a ton of yarn um, so you might actually do use less yarn just doing the chain than you would if you knitted it and picked up stitches and then knit a row and then bound off um, so here you might actually use up less with crochet. Now, the only way I can really think of to figure out how much yarn you're going to use is to weigh your yarn and then do the stitch you're gonna do on like one side of the blanket or maybe so many inches, like 10 inches, and weigh your yarn again. How many grams did you use for those 10 inches? Um, once you have that figured out, let's say, let's just say you use like one gram for 10 inches, then you can measure your whole entire perimeter of your blanket. Let's say that the perimeter of the blanket is 100 inches 
Okay, now I'm gonna get confused. I guess you would need 10 grams, right? One gram for 10 inches, 100 inches would be 10 grams. Basically, you're gonna to have to do some math here and see um, if you have enough yarn. But yeah, just do a little section, or weigh your yarn, do a little section, weigh it again, and then you can do that math from there. So I hope that helps, and um, you should post a picture of your blanket. I wanna see how it turns out. Okay, last question. Um, this is from Bilingual Anne, and Anne, I looked at your username for so long before I figured out the first word was bilingual. Bilingual, I was trying to make it so much harder than it is. Um, but she asks, if I want to make a slightly larger scrubby, how should I do the next round? One double crochet in each stitch, two in each stitch. So Anne is talking about um, the Tool Kitchen Scrubby, which I will try to remember to link a tutorial to. Um, this is a crocheted basically circle um, that I use as a sponge. I love my kitchen scrubbies. Um, so if you are going to add on, I think it's, I'm not remembering exactly, I think it's a three round pattern. It's free on my blog, um, but if you want to add on another round, you will just need to continue the increasing ratio. So I believe the first round, or the second, first increase round is two double crochets in every stitch. Then it's one double crochet, two double crochets in the next stitch. So then that next round would be two double crochets and then two double crochets in the next stitch. If you wanted to keep adding on, it would be three double crochets and then two double crochets in the next stitch. And you just keep adding one stitch in between increases um, forever. That's how you make a circle. <laughs> um, but I hope that helps. Um, let me know if, if I can be of further assistance. Okay, let's announce some winners and then I have more news to talk about as far as videos this week because like I said, I had four videos this week. A lot was going on. So the Gila Cow, hashtag Gila Cow, wrapped up on April 30th and we have two prizes to give away. Um, one winner was chose randomly from the Ravelry thread. The other was chose or chosen randomly from the Instagram hashtag Gila Cow. So I have both of those winners here. And I thought it would be fun to share um, what they made. Um, so the first person randomly chosen on the Gila Cow thread was Don Barker. Okay, not really. So Don is the um, designer of the Traveler's Loop, and also she's the one donating the prizes. So it was hilarious that true story, the first random number that got selected was actually one of her posts so obviously I did it again <laughs> but I did message her and told her that she was the first winner and she said wow she never wins wins anything and she was so excited to win yarn from herself which I thought <laughs> was so funny so the real winner is carb 101 I could not believe this is actually one of my friends Cindy, and I am so, so excited for you um, because she actually did, um, oops, now I'm clicking off of it. She um, did two helical projects, so I thought I would show them to you real quick. The first was a pair of scrappy socks. They're like blues and greens. How cute are those? So cute. And then the second was a gorgeous Soldatna crop. So super pretty also um, helical knitting. So congratulations, Cindy. I'm so excited for you. If you can um, message me or email me knittynatty at gmail.com, however you want to contact me is totally fine. Um, and let me know that you saw this and then we can coordinate with Dawn to get you your yarn prize. Um, and then we have one more winner from Instagram. This was chosen at random and the winner is Pearl Baby, who is Ava. And Ava um, was one of my testers for the Yarn Cozy Light. So it was so cool to see two names that were familiar to me, um, even though they were completely random pop up. So um, Ava, I will put a picture. I took a screenshot earlier. She did a helical hat. I think this was her first time helical knitting and her hat had several colors like pink and red and blue. So she really went for it um, with the helical knitting thing, but it turned out super cute. 
and I'm so excited. Congratulations, Ava and Cindy. Just contact me and we will get your prizes to you. Okay, so the rest of the news, let's see here. Um, oh, I forgot to mention when I was rambling on and on about the mini yarn cozy light that the original one, the coupon code for 30% off is still good for another week by the time you see this. So just go to the love letter video and in the first like minute, <laughs> the code is on there. So go watch that video and get the code so you can get 30% off Etsy or Ravelry for that pattern. Um, if you like the mini yarn cozy light and you want both, still go ahead and grab the original because then you'll be able to get the mini one for just $3. So instead of getting the bundle for nine, you'll get both patterns for $7.50. I think that math is right. It works out to be a better, better deal. Okay, um, and then lastly, videos this week. I had a, well, I had, what did I have last week? What did I say, what did I have last Tuesday? Now I can't even remember. <laughs> oh my gosh, I literally had to go to my page, my YouTube channel to see. So I had my love letter to Yarn Cozy come out last Tuesday. You guys already knew about that. Um, but last week, besides a podcast, I also had a really quick tutorial come out. It's like under two minutes. And it is how to do ribbing in the round. Uh, I'm sorry, ribbing with self-striping yarn with an invisible color change. So this is part of my Yarn Cozy Light pattern, but it will be good for anything that you're doing. Like if you use a self-striping yarn to make a ribbed hat and you wanna hide the color changes, you can use that technique. So go check that out, I'll make sure to link it. And then on Friday, I had um, a really fun video come out. I've never done a video like this before where I chronicled a project from like yarn to finished object and i did that alongside my friend kate who is one of a kate we both test crocheted the sound wave shawl for stephanie aaron and we both made a video so it was fun because we did a uh, back-to-back premieres on youtube so we all came and we watched my video and then we headed over to kate's channel and watched her video but both videos are now up and you can even see the chat um, from the live premiere on there so I will make sure to link my video and also Kate's channel and her video in the description box if you want to go check those out. They're just, I think, good to put on in the background as you're knitting or you know cooking dinner, cleaning. They're just those fun videos to kind of have on. Um, and then lastly, today I released a summer project planning um, video, which was a lot of fun. You're going to see the projects that you see here today, but instead of hearing them from when I've already decided, you're gonna see them from like the start, like literally me picking them off the shelf um, and kind of explaining how I pick out projects um, for a new month or a new season. So like I said, the uh, garment is gonna be a little different. So go and watch that. And then what I said today will make more sense, but um, that was a really fun video to do. I got that idea from you guys. So if you have any great ideas for videos, please let me know because I do, take them into consideration. They help me a lot. Okay, let's talk life. So today I had my final varicose veins procedure, which if you are new here, you might not know that uh, two months ago, I had a varicose veins procedure in my right and left upper leg, which I'm not gonna get into too much detail because I know it can make people feel very squeamish. Um, but basically um, in the fall, I was noticing a lot of discomfort and numbness and tingling and also visible veins. And so I went into a vein specialist and it's a long process of like wearing compression socks and getting your insurance approved, but I finally got approved, had my first procedures over spring break. And then of course the world went crazy. And so I just had my final one on my right leg so I can hold my foot up here. My, I'm bandaged from here to knee, which is not so bad because last time I was bandaged from ankle to like hip for a whole day, which is not, I know that's nothing really to complain about, um, but it was kind of funny. So like one, I had one on Tuesday, so like my right leg was bandaged up and then one on Thursday and my left leg was bandaged up. And luckily it was over spring break, so I didn't have to go into work because I couldn't really 
sit properly because I couldn't bend my leg. So this is much, much better. Um, but I'm really, really happy to have that done and out of the way. I have to go to a few follow-ups, but hopefully after that, it's just gonna be preventing getting any more of these. So compression socks, definitely in car rides and on planes, and then whenever I'm sitting a lot, which is a lot nowadays. So I probably should be wearing them every day, um, but so grateful to have that done and that it went well today. Um, and then lastly, <laughs> bringing me joy I have something silly I'm gonna show you um, if you watch any of my videos or any of my stories where you can see me from like head to foot you will notice that I wear slippers a lot I have those clog like Ugg slippers that I asked for for Christmas one year because I don't go barefoot in the house what about you it's so fun to hear from people like do you wear socks in the house or shoes in the house or barefoot um, but I cannot go barefoot. I also don't like wearing just socks because I can't stand the feeling of getting crumbs on my bare feet, like walking around, or if I'm wearing socks, like stepping in something that's wet, whether we just drip something on the floor or like water from toaster's bowl or somebody dropped an ice cube, like it gives me the heebie-jeebies and I can't stand it. So I like to wear Ugg slippers, specifically the hard-soled ones. But for the summer, that gets a little hot and so I really wanted to find flip-flop slippers, but everything that I'd ever seen was not supportive at all. And then Ugg came through and my mother-in-law so kindly bought me these slippers. So look at these. <laughs> I am so obsessed. These are, they're exactly like my clogs with the really hard soled bottom, except they're flip-flop. And I really like that they're not just one band because that was the other thing. I didn't want something that was gonna be falling off. So this crisscross, literally, this goes all the way to my arch. These stay on better than my clogs, honestly, probably because I haven't stretched them out as much, um, but I love these so much. They're the same like wool or shearling or whatever it is, and they're awesome, and I wanted to get a fun color. Kent didn't think they were all that awesome, but I think they're awesome, so that's what matters. So that's what's bringing me joy this week, as silly as it is a nice pretty much gift from my mother-in-law which was so sweet but also something that I am using every single day and loving so so much. I think that's it for today. I cannot wait to I'm I'm done. I I've done all of my work for today. This is the first day like including weekends in maybe 2 weeks that I'm done before 6 o'clock. So I'm so excited. I'm actually going to get to do some knitting this evening. I want to do it so bad. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next week. Bye. Toaster? I'm gonna go downstairs.